Snickers. Oh my God. <laughs> what the f where did you buy those Milky Mamas? What's up guys, welcome to episode 74 Dropouts. I'm gonna be honest, uh, this week I'm gonna be a little ornery. I'm gonna have a little bit of attitude, a little bad boy edge this week. So if you guys say anything and I make fun of you, don't take it personally, I'm being a bad boy this week. Why are you gonna have this attitude? Where is this coming from? It comes from a childhood trauma, obviously, that I'm bringing up now and I'm taking it out on you guys, but I'm being upfront about it because I'm a good friend. So I will hurt your guys' feelings, but just know that it's out of my own <laughs> Depression. Which divorce does it stem from? The first one or my mom's one? first divorce was with my real father. So that one that one probably hurt the most. That one's probably a little bit more damaging. But the second mm -hmm. one, I was like, finally, maybe I'll have another a real daddy that will stay around. And then like boom, bamboozle it again. Can, then, you, can you hit some intro music? Okay. Anyway, Jared's here again this week. Was hoping that was hey. going to happen. Uh, Indy, you yeah. said, Indy's been dying about this surprise. She's like, I can't wait for you guys to see the surprise. All yeah. day she's been raving I, it. It looks like it. you're hiding something under your hoodie. I don't know what it is, but. I'm not hiding anything under a hoodie. What's, what's, well, what's the gone, surprise? I've been gone for about a week and a half. And why is that? Why do you think? Did you get no. a tit job? Zach. No. What? <laughs> no. Oh, look at those oh milkers. My God. <laughs> What the fuck? Where did you buy those Milky Mamas? Beverly Hills. Oh, you bought those in Beverly Hills? Well, they look like the fakest boobs I've ever seen. So where'd you actually get them? <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> what made you- This is the surprise that you've been dying about? Oh my God. It's, it's like a bodysuit. Yeah, oh my oh, God. Why they're yo, so the aggressive? are fucking <laughs> out to play. Dude, the high beams are on. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like with like a little, uh, I don't is know. Is it some, weird? Can I like contour or foundation, whatever you can blend that. Are we getting, well. would, would we get flagged if I like touched it? Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, can you put like a box over it? I might be able to do like a blur thing. Okay. Thanks for adding more work to already my mounds of work. Oh, oh wow. God. They feel nothing like the real thing. <laughs> um, but instantly I what? have to cross my legs. Okay. Wow. They're it's, dude. They're just staring at so, my face right now. It is hard to look you in the eyes. I, <laughs> I've never had that issue of guys just, Hey, you've been a, you've been a solid, um, a team. Negative a, you, you've been a negative life. a, they concave. I've been, <laughs> hey, Jared. That we, was a joke. I was going with your joke. And we didn't need that. Sorry, you know I didn't I mean? know. I thought that it was kind of like, you um, know. I've been a solid negative A my entire life. Um, and I was just curious because if the drag queens can do it, I thought, why can't, hey. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. God, I just want a bowl of cereal right now. Um, oh. Oh, she push. Whew, now I can think again. <laughs> I've been like a solid negative A my whole life. And my thought process, I was literally scrolling through TikTok and some girl that was like, I want to see what I look like with boobs before I have a boob job. Cause she was like, I don't even know if I would look. Are you planning on having a boob job? No, I'm not. I'm not planning on having a boob job. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, Ooh, pretty sure. Pretty no, sure. No, no, okay. Next well, week she's coming back with. <laughs> well, I'll be like fully open. Like I've never, there's never been anything that I've ever wanted to change on my body or like go under the knife for or get surgery for. The, uh, the only thing that I would have ever considered was getting lip filler. And then I was like, no, I actually don't want it. Like it's not something I want to do. Recently, I've been looking into like breast augmentations, mm. not because I want a breast <laughs> augmentation. I don't want a breast augmentation. That's what she said. If you now. get it, actually, hey, if you get it, we'll get it, right, Jared? Right. Yes. yes I sir. don't want a breast augmentation. But, the titty triplets. Anyway, go on. But my, like, my chest has been something that I've been super insecure about my whole life. Slightly. It's not that I've been insecure about it. It's just like, I don't feel like I, I feel like a 12 year old boy sometimes. Like I'm literally like, I feel like I have a boy body sometimes. Like from here up, I'm like, okay, you look like a boy. I would never go into the knife for it just cause that's not something that I would ever personally do. But apparently there's something called that you can get like fillers, like injectables. And I don't know. Like lip I, filler, but for boobs. for boobs. But I don't know how safe they are. I haven't even looked into it. I don't even know if it's real. But anyway, I was like, why would I do any of that? And Didn't spend you say like, you were, somebody's talking about it. Didn't Kendall Jenner get that recently or something? I thought, well, that's what, what? I, yeah, that's what a bunch of people were saying because her. Let's pull up some pics. <laughs> why would she do anything that could possibly jeopardize her modeling career? That wouldn't jeopardize her modeling career. Well, I don't know she if did, it goes wrong or if something. If they're injectables, do they go away then? Like lip filler? I, I have no idea. I, I haven't done research on it. I have no idea. I don't even know if it's a real thing, honestly. But I was like, why would I spend thousands of dollars and do all that when I can just buy them on Amazon? So now you got them. Yeah, but I don't want Amazon. How does it feel? How much did they cost? They're about 90 bucks. You wow. spent $100 on that? 
90. Are Sorry, they are they up. hollow in the middle or can you like store snacks in them? Because that'd be great for a movie theater. Oh right? my God, that'd be amazing. And then you cut out holes in the nipples. You can squeeze out M&Ms. What? Jared? <laughs> Jared. Do you know Jared. like a dispenser? Jared. Log off for the day. You're going to go in your room. You're going to reboot. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That was bad. I thought it was funny. No, anyway, I just I just thought honestly, they were half for like I want to know what I would look like with boobs. Half, I don't know if you'd get that big though. No, I would never get this. What's big. That, what size? Yeah, what size? This is a C. That's, That's a, a C? C. Apparently. Well, I have seen some C's in my life, and those seem like D's. I mean, I ordered C's. Wait, can you can you unzip real quick? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I need to see this for myself again. God, are Those are C's? some perky mamas. Um, I why there? Wait, I feel like I can say this because they're fake, right? Because I'm yeah, not objectifying her. Yeah. I'm objectifying the fake silicone on her chest. Exactly. Yummy. I mean, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so nice, cool. They're really hot. Are yeah. they heavy? They're pretty heavy. Yeah. Don't do this. <laughs> I'm just like, you feel like a woman. And not that you didn't feel like a woman, but I you didn't feel, feel like I do. That was my thing. Like I never really felt like sexy or womanly. But I meant like, do you feel like I, not like a woman? Do you feel like fertile almost? Like do you feel like <laughs> interesting <laughs> words? Do you know what I mean? Feel sexier? No. Well, no fertile. <laughs> like do you I feel know, like you're about to give birth? Yeah. Like do you feel? No. Do you feel like more motherly? I feel, I feel more adult like. Wow. But they're really hot, and I'm sweating. My balls off. Imagine. Okay, now imagine girls that actually have big boobs. All I that hear sucks. is like when you're going on a run and stuff. Yeah. It's it's a lot of extra. It's a lot of extra baggage. One, so. of, one of my mom's got breast reduction surgery because it was like killing her back. Let's cut to a clip. Nope. <laughs> April? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. We should. I, I wish we could play a game. Wait. What game what, would this no, be? Where, where are you going it's, with this? It's, we need to play. Um, What's it called? Where you stare into the eyes? Like we have a, a staring, staring contest. contest. And then. I can't. <laughs> it's so hard. It really is. It's like I, it's not even that I want to uh, look at it to obje like objectify you. It's just I know I'm just, not allowed to look at it. So my brain's like trying so hard not to look at it that it's gonna trick me into looking at it. And boom. Okay. <laughs> and there we are. Are we gonna get like? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just. It's not even like. It's not even intentional. It's just like instinct. It's just like. <laughs> are we gonna get flagged for this? Maybe. Well, no. Her tits aren't yeah. out. <laughs> what? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your eyes. All right. Can we move top? Don't squeeze them together like that. Oh, my God. They're nice. <laughs> They're nice. I think I like them. <laughs> I'm kidding. You should post a picture in them and like just break the TikTok internet. See what people think. Yeah. I don't think they look real enough. Well, no, I think you could do some you, editing. You know, that, and, you know that trend where people call, like the Kardashians did it, where they called everybody? That would be so funny. You could do that with those. What was the trend? Or the Kardashians, they call different people and they're all their family members are sitting behind the camera and then they just answer and then they just see all the Kardashians staring Guys, at them. Guys, do you think I could start an OnlyFans with these? Honestly, maybe. Because there, there are a lot of people that do OnlyFans that like don't actually show any nudity. I mean, I'm down to show a fake titty or two. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm down. Okay. Now, okay. Hear me out, Jared. Am okay. I am I toxic male if I ask her to zip them up? Because they're Whoa. distracting. Oh, that is. See, pretty, I feel like that's yeah, got to be toxic, right? That's very toxic. So if what? You, I don't know how to handle. Are it, they distracting you? If you, huh? no. if you honest, tell are they? her, no. No. Yeah, <laughs> are, they, are they okay? Let's be honest. They're, they're a little they're, distracting. I think they're distracting I think they're because just new. you are so used to the absolute opposite on me. I think yeah, they're new. I think they're just new. So we're they're yeah. If new. you walked in here with a new car, we'd probably be looking at the new car, right, Jared? <laughs> exactly. We'd be like covered up. We can't see anything but the new car. Man, <laughs> I'm gonna take them off. Honk honk, huh? Are you gonna no, <laughs> no, no. Jared's about to get motorboated. I to the say. audio listeners, um, Indiana is currently putting her fake boobs in Jared's face, and Jared's saying, "Yes, I enjoy it." No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Stop. Wow, they're so oh, aggressive. Don't smack them. <laughs> All right, guys, um, boobs are off. Indy's back. My chest would never get a double take. <laughs> you could have a staring contest with me all day and never lose. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so Indy's back, and we're back. Um, Jared, why don't you talk about Spider-Man trailer? Wait, there's been something you've been wanting to talk about on the podcast. You got a lot you want to talk about. I think so. Remember I was eating Starting with the Spider-Man trailer. Okay. Holy hey, don't act like you I I said you said you were excited for it when I was talking to you about it. I thought it looked cool. Backstabbing. That's not true. I thought the edit that you showed me was cool. So what we're talking about, right? I mean, in the in the first teaser that they gave us, you know, they they showed Doc Ock and then they hinted at the Green Goblin because he saw one of his like original pumpkin bombs. You better be glad from the waist down is behind that desk when you talk about Spider-Man. <laughs> did, did you hear the the knock on top of this table? Anyway, um, so they hinted 
at uh, at Green Goblin. They also had his uh, Willem Dafoe's laugh in it, like his Green Goblin laugh. And then they also, they hinted at Electro, like, because they had lightning strikes and stuff like that. This trailer went all out and just straight up showed all of the villains, which I was super excited about. Because then you got a better look at uh, Doc Ock. You so he's saw, in it. Oh, yeah. And it's the original Alfred Molina from Spider-Man 2. And then um, you see you see the Green Goblin. Actually, you see him twice. Okay, the first time he's in his original suit. Zach, if you don't wake up right now, the first time you see him is on the George Washington Bridge and he's in his original suit from the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man, right? But then there's another shot. Everybody is assuming that it's... Everybody? Yeah. A, I haven't assumed anything about this Okay, movie. a lot of people are assuming... <laughs> there's a second shot where it's a shot of the night sky and uh, the, the there's a glider flying in and he's throwing like the, the knife pumpkin pom, bom, bombs or whatever. And But it's not like the original Green Goblin suit. And everyone's like, oh my God, that's the Hobgoblin or that's going to be like Ned is going to come from an alternate universe and turn into the Hobgoblin or whatever. No, if you've read any of the leaks <laughs> okay you you know that willem dafoe up like changes his outfit to where he doesn't have the helmet anymore and he like has like a purple scarf and stuff like that instead he wears like welder's glasses or whatever anyway so first of all i'm going to debunk that thank you that, so much i was worried i was like is jared really, going to debunk this one that's willem dafoe's green goblin and that was the green goblin that was the, the green villain goblin. Okay. yeah um, then you see Jamie Foxx's Electro. He's no longer blue. He doesn't look like an electric Smurf anymore. Is it Jamie Foxx playing it? Yeah, it's Jamie Foxx playing it. Um, but this, blue? yeah, this time they went like the more traditional route. There, Mark Webb was trying to do something with the Amazing Spider-Man. Mark Webb. Yeah, no, seriously, the Amazing Spider-Man director is named Mark Webb. Probably why I got the job. Probably, dude. You should show the Spider-Man people your fake tits. Maybe they'll put you in a movie. You could be um, true. I don't know who you... Well, they could throw you in a blonde wig and be Gwen Stacy. Ooh. Speaking of movies, I'm on hold for one right now. Ooh, what's it called? What's the plot? I can't say any of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, anyway, so they show Electro, and then he's in his... Uh, so he, he's got a new getup. He's no longer blue. And he has like the classic like electric star whatever mask on. But it's not a mask. It's uh, it's made out of electricity. You see Sandman and you see the lizard. Now, the interesting with the lizard thing with the lizard. The interesting thing about the lizard? The interesting oh, okay. thing about the lizard is that uh, in the trailer, you it's I'm pretty sure it's going to be the final scene in the you movie. You got 20 more seconds of nerd talk with Jared. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the final scene in the movie, but you see this badass battle going down with Tom Holland, Spider-Man, and uh, Sandman, Electro, Lizard, and Green Goblin, and um, Doc Ock, right? But there's one scene. Are the other spider man in it? Hold on. <laughs> okay. None of it's confirmed. There have been a lot of leaks and a lot of rumors, okay? Tom but, Holland do that? He well, leaks everything, I swear. Actually, he has his nudes. Where are those at? Am I right? really anything about this movie. His nudes are leaked. What? You've seen Tom Holland naked? I feel like I have. I have. No, that was. Um, you saw his web shooter? No, that, <laughs> no, that was um, uh, the fucking the, the guy that I Chris made the Brown? video about. No. Anyway. So the, the last scene or one of the last scenes of the trailer is Spider-Man jumping. They're like Spider-Man tor jumping towards the villains and all the villains are jumping towards him. Except you notice that uh, Electro, Sandman and the Lizard are kind of like well, Sandman's going straight towards Tom Holland, but Electro and the Lizard aren't really going towards him like they're going like way above him and way below him then in the brazilian uh trailer like dub trailer that scene was extended and you see the lizard get punched or whatever by nothing like his head like turns and whatever like he just got hit and so everyone's speculating that they're like oh they just totally edited out all of you know toby and andrew in these scenes so that was that was a big thing um Anyway, uh, is that, am I out on my nerd talk? Because I got a few more stuff that I could talk about. <laughs> I love his passion um, for this. Okay, Mary F. Okay, Kill. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Real quick, real quick. The leaks that have come out, right? There was a 4K video of Andrew Garfield in his Amazing Spider-Man outfit on a blue screen and his hand is up on a rail. Now this video, everyone's like, oh, that's a deep fake. That's totally not real or whatever. The, the deep fake theory uh, was totally debunked by a ton of visual effects artists. They would they were like, this video would be nearly impossible 
it's a deep fake, right? It has to be real because like the way his mouth moves, the way his jaw like interacts, and then his stomach also moves like when he's breathing and stuff like that. Anyway, his hands on a railing. I'm sorry, and how do people is, have the time for this? It is the same because we care about this stuff for whatever reason. Anyway, his hand. The, the scene is um, oh, and the, is the same scaffolding scaffolding set from this last scene of the movie uh, of the trailer, right? So everyone's like, "Well, there it is," you know. And so that was pretty much confirmed real. And then also in that same video, you see him talking to somebody, and you see a hand, and it kind of looks like the same costume hand as Tobey Maguire Spider Man, which there is also another photo leak. Are you going to include graphics with this? Because yeah, of I, course, I'm of course I'm going to okay. include graphics. Okay, um, which there is also another photo leak of Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire on the same scaffolding set, on the same blue screen, and there, there was a leaked picture. So everyone's like connecting the dots now, especially now that the trailer's been released. Anyway, go nerd time over. Thank you for letting me get that out. Okay, Mary, Mary F. Kill, Toby, Andrew, or um, Tom Holland, Spider-Man? Ooh, that's a good question. Is this based purely on their personalities or like- Jared, I don't know. Just answer the question. Spider okay, I think, okay. Oh, see, Toby's an OG, right? But I'm gonna be honest. I think I like Tom Holland the best as Spider Man. Really? I think so. That's really that's a controversial statement. Kind of. I saw this tweet the other day that said um, Toby was the um, was the best Peter Parker, but not the best Spider Man. Andrew Garfield was the best Spider Man, but way too cool to be Peter Parker because he's kind of nerd, kind of an outcast, whatever. And then Tom Holland is cool. average at both. They said average at both, which makes him the best Spider Man overall. And I kind of agree with that statement. I don't think Tom Holland is average. At I Mary think he's F. Pretty Kill. Good. I think he's a pretty good Peter Parker. I think I think he's pretty good at both. I think he's witty as Spider Man, which is what he needs to be. And then I think he plays like kind of the nerdy, unconfident Peter Parker that also needs to be. Mm -hmm. I think they missed a lot of opportunities with character development with not providing the backstory. I'm glad we didn't get the backstory because we've had that twice now. Oh, we don't about need the it. uncle. Yeah, about the uncle and like the spider bite, or whatever. Anyway, fuck didn't Mary we Kill. Get, we got that with Tom Holland. Didn't we? Mm -mm. He's no. just already Spider Man? Because he got his debut as Spider Man in Captain America Civil War. Oh. And then Homecoming came out. Anyway, F Mary Kill. Um uh honestly, I think I'm F uh um Andrew Garfield Spider Man. Wow. He's is this is a good looking Spider Man, right? And he's cool, he's got that swagger about him. Um honestly, oh, that's tough. The the marrying kill is tough. He's really contemplating. He's like, if I say this wrong, then one of them's not going to like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to kill Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, but I, Tom Holland, I feel like I could relate to more of like uh, like Mary, you know? <laughs> no, you know what? Okay, I changed my mind. F Tom Holland Spider-Man, marry Tobey Maguire, kill Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. I'm glad we got that out. Your that was tough. Your blood rushing? Yeah. <laughs> look how my heart is pounding. You see right how now. he's like a little like down before I brought that up and now look at him now. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. Yeah, because I finally got to talk about something that I really wanted to talk about. You said you've been wanting to talk about something on the podcast for a while. Oh, well, we could talk about the the Taylor Swift stuff going on. Yes, we can. Yes, we okay. can. Okay. This is gonna get slightly controversial. <laughs> what how? I mean, we're talking about Taylor Swift here. I, have you watched her short film? I've watched Parts of it. So Taylor Swift put out a short film kind of depicting her three a ten month minute version of all too well. A three month relationship she had with um, Jake that was six Hall. month. No, it was like it was really it was short. Three month relationship with it Jake. It was like Jillian a Hall. couple months. I think it was three months. She was nineteen, he was thirty, correct? And he was twenty. She was twenty. She was twenty, he was thirty? Yeah, something like that. That's so all you know. I know. <laughs> I don't know. Um so she was like twenty and he was thirty. They only dated for a couple of months max. And then she absolutely shitted on him in red back in 2012. Shitted on him. Since she's been re-recording and re-releasing all of her albums as Taylor's versions, she came out with a 10-minute version of All Too Well, where she had a lot of freaking hints. Like, up up to... It was getting real specific. To, very specific. Like, she knows exactly what she's doing. Um, up to the characters playing it had the same age gap. What, and the, so wasn't this relationship 10 years ago? Yes, yes, it 2008. was. 2008. 
<laughs> so what? What's it like for him just getting dragged again? He's just like, oh, Yo, we, what? we dated for three months. I mean, she's like really dragging ago. him. Like one of the lines was, "I'll get older, but your lovers will stay my age." Yeah. So like he's dating a twenty-five year old right now, and he's forty. He has been dating her for three years. I found out. Mm-hmm, so, but why is she yeah, attacking him again? Did he? What? What terrible thing do you do in the relationship? I don't. No, well, I think I suspected, think there was like a. Isn't it suspected that he took her virginity? virginity? Yeah. So. That could be a big thing. But also, you know? yes, yeah, but, but also still- there were adults in a relationship. And sometimes that happens where you don't stay with the person that you first slept with. Like that's oh, yeah, life. That happens all, all the time. All the time. Didn't happen that, for my mom. That's life. And yes, it did. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I think it's a whole lot of, uh, there has to be something more going on for her to just kill him like this i don't know but it, it she's is, killed every one of her boyfriends exactly song, that's what so. I, that's what i'm gonna say like don't get me wrong i love but taylor swift why music, would anyone she, i would never want to date taylor swift then. but she that'd be scary absolutely does drag her boyfriends like she did that with yeah. like taylor lautner harry styles, harry styles you know joe like jonas or was it nick i, I don't know joe. Which, i don't know which one it was so there's all there's, there have been these memes about him because mr perfectly fine or whatever Goodbye, Mr. Perfectly Fine. How's your heart after break? That's written about the Jonas Brother. And there's all these things of him like absolutely jamming to that. And he's just like, because he got let off way too easy or some (laughs) shit. I don't know. I think it's a little much personally. Do I love her? And do I love that she's like taking ownership of all of her music and really singing and doing whatever the fuck she want? Damn it. What? I had a bet with my grandpa before I came on here that I wouldn't say the F word. Oh, you just lost that bet. How much did you bet him? I didn't bet Please him any money. tell me your grandpa's not going to watch this episode. Oh, with your shit. boobs on it? Oh, he probably will. Oh, no. Dude, don't don't wear boobs if your grandpa's going to watch this podcast. He watches the podcast every, every, every week. Oh, he's going to hate us all. I don't know. I think it's all a little much. It is. For a relationship that was like a it, couple months. It is a little much, but it also... I think makes perfect sense for Taylor Swift and her fandom because I feel like people that are like hardcore fans of Taylor Swift kind of have the same mentality when it comes to love where they're, they kind of get a bit obsessive, you know, and they kind of, uh, it's kind of like that book that we're listening to. Like they're the romanticizers where they think life is going to be like a fairy tale. This is so funny. So Jared and I, took a little boys trip. We, we went to go see Indy was in a fashion show for Francesca's, the brand she worked with, did a phenomenal job. But Jared and I rode about two hours yeah. um, by ourselves in a car to go watch Indy in this fashion show. And then I'm like, hey, Jared, would you want to like listen to a book on relationships? He's like, <laughs> and what's that book called, Zach? Um, How to Not Die Alone. Like the most depressing name ever. Um, so basically the book talks about, are you a maximizer? Um, are you, uh, what are the other two things? It was a, a maximizer, a romanticizer, or a hesitator. And can you kind of explain what each three of those mean? So you, it, the book says normally you fall into one or two of these categories, or you can like add different traits and all these, and it helps you with having more long-term fulfilling relationships. Just what boys do. Just what boys. Just what boys. So we're having a little boys day. We're going to listen to... Relationship advice. Anyway, go ahead. Um, so yeah, so basically, once you categorize yourself in these, cat, you know, in these sections, you like the book teaches you how to not only work on things within yourself, but also work on things like with your partner. So the romanticizer um, is basically you uh, you believe in kind of like the Disney fairy tale where you think you are going to meet Prince Charming, you're going to have that love at first sight moment. And you are going to fall head over heels for that person. You're going to know the second you see them and you're not going to have to work for anything. And the second. And if you don't have that, then it's hard for you to find someone. Exactly. So like that book breaks down. This is the maximizer? No, this is the romanticizer. So the book's kind of breaking down like, no, love isn't always love at first sight. It's getting to know someone and compatibility. So stop shooing everyone away if you don't feel those instant butterflies. Exactly. And it goes way in more depth. But what was the other? Also, there have been a bunch of studies saying that if you feel like butterflies in a relationship and that instant like sense of anxiety, it's because that comes from stress and anxiety and a feeling of like not feeling safe and not feeling comfortable and not like. So the butterflies are almost a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think I agree with that because when I've gotten butterflies, I've never been like this is a negative anxiety I, I it's more of like butterflies it, out of excitement yeah excitement like oh i can't wait to see them like uh, oh what am i gonna wear tomorrow like to make sure that i kind of look good for them oh, yeah. I guess that's true. like it's more of, that's more of like I, a, felt, I felt butterflies in relationships and like 
It's been out of like it, like it's before our first kiss. Or yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, I, d- I don't think. Oh, you're bringing it out. I think that's what makes it fun at the beginning. So the maximizer is um, like they're they're not high maintenance. Like that's the wrong word, but they expect the most out of themselves and their partners. So they will hold their themselves and their partners to such high expectations because they know what they want in life. They know how to get it, and if their partners don't match that same mentality, then they oftentimes get kind of uh, like uh, not short tempered, um, kind of impatient with them. And then like their, their shortcomings are where they kind of get a little fed up with their partner if they're not living up to those expectations. So there, there's a good side and a bad side because like the good side is you and your partner will hopefully be the best versions of yourselves. But also if there are times where you're not living up to that, then it causes problems in the relationship. Yeah, I think that's what I have. And then the hesitator. You don't even need to think that you have that, Zach. That is you to a T. Yeah. Yeah. And then the book helps me. And then the last one is uh, the hesitator, which is where they have, uh, where, where a person has unrealistic expectations for themselves and uh, what their partner thinks of them. So, which is what I think I am, where I feel like I have to be the best version of myself before I'm ready to date someone, you know, where like, I feel like I have to be in the best shape career wise. I have to be exactly where I want to be. Um, you know, uh, mentally and emotionally, I have to be the healthiest I've ever been that sort of stuff. And so a lot of times with just like the name says that will hold you back from being, um, for, from finding relationships or being healthy in a relationship. That was really smooth. Indeed. So that was, that was the book that we're reading. And then another thing I found really interesting in the book, it Tom, it talks about stop trying to find a prom date instead oh, of yeah. like a committed partner. So a prom date is the person you take to prom. Like they look good. They look good in a dress. They look good in front of your friends. Like this is the person you want to show off. Like that's not always the best person for you. And a lot of people will go with a prom date, even if they're not as compatible because it looks better to other people. Like, Oh, they're, you're with this person when really you're like, yeah, but they saw after you guys have spoken about, those ca- categories i still like i can't well, you put can be myself a mix, you can be a mixture yeah but uh, i don't expect anything too high out of my and those aren't all the things in each category no no i'm just saying that like like yeah you'd have to an, read the book as an overall thing like i don't expect anything too high from myself or my partner i wouldn't say that i try to be the best version of myself and i try like my want my partner to be the best version of themselves before getting into a relationship so that holds me back because I like becoming a better, I don't know, like I want my partner and me to help each other become the best versions of ourselves. And I also don't believe in love at first sight. And I'm not very, I'm not the romantic type. That stuff makes me kind of, I think you're, yeah, I think you're the hesitator. You'll be like, I don't think I'm ready for this right now. Like I want to make sure I'm in the right headspace, blah, 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 blah. I I also think that. Hesitators. Don't you dare crunch that Still, ice yeah. into that mic. What did we tell you before the podcast started? We, right before this podcast, team. you did buy, she bought an, okay, we go to Best Buy today and we're like, hey, let's get some speakers for your TV because she has a really big TV, but you can't hear what anybody's saying because the speakers suck. So we're going to get some cheap um, speakers. And then we make our way downstairs to go look at the speakers. We pass by an ice machine. She said, I like ice. I said, that's cool. We'll just keep moving. She's like, have all. I like to make the stories interesting. Okay. That, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Indy's version. We went and we bought an ice maker. We came home. No, that's not my version. What? My version is... Chewing. Let me put just it, have one more. Can put I it one down. More? Can I have one more? Move your mic away. You're disgusting. <laughs> we need to employ a woman to fight her because we, <laughs> we personally can't. We can't. Okay. The, fr- the frustration's there. Okay, okay. Let's get Ronda Rousey. Here's the story. We went to Best Buy after we got lunch and I wanted a speaker for my TV. We went downstairs. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Stop. Okay. Thanks for recapping. Stop. The cheapest one that we could and get. And also pack up the mic. Here. Yes, it's okay, still incredibly the- loud. Here. Just keep talking. The cheapest one we could get was $670. And I said, no. And then the so best not one. Not the we- cheapest one we could get. It was. Them. There was one for $150. No, it wasn't. A speaker? That was just yeah. a sound bar. And you said we. Why would you not just get the same Roku I know. Ones? I said we're going to go to Walmart and get a cheap one. Because you oh, said okay. the Roku ones are not compatible with my TV. No, we were going to get a different one. There's another one. that's Whatever. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we saw because we just we were by Best Buy. So we're- but dude, the. The person comes tries to come swindle us. He's like, "Yes, yeah, so if you want speakers, it's going to be about twenty two hundred dollars yeah. for Whoa. some." I, I was like, "That's like, more than the TV was, bud." But uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it moving. Anyway, I sorry for anyway, cutting you off. Go ahead. Thanks. 
Anyway, Thanks. so once we discovered that, Zach was like, want to go look around? I was like, yeah. And then we went to the kitchen section. We almost bought a blender because your blender sucks here and I use it all the time. So I almost bought a blender. And then I was like, oh, do you guys have ice machines? And they were like, <laughs> yeah. And so we found one and I was like, what's the point in having money if you can't buy ice machines? Oh, <laughs> How so, is this any so different spent, from my story? That what I want to say. Same story. So no, I, this is how it happened. Ex- Actually, we almost bought a blender. <laughs> so I spent the six hundred dollars on an ice machine. Spent, when we have four ice trays, and you in know what her freezer. excuse was? She's like, "I was like, we should probably save money. Do you really want to buy a six hundred dollar ice machine?" She's like, "I like crunching ice a lot." <laughs> and I said, "Okay, money bag. So let's get it." Then. And I had to, I had to lug this thing. And now it's at our apartment for some reason. And it's so loud. <laughs> it's not that loud at all. Well, I always watch movies here, and that's when I like to eat my ice. Oh, my God. Um, also, we can return it until January 14th. Okay, so, so we got some use. Yeah, so I'll probably it. honestly return it. So we'll- No chance that thing gets returned. <laughs> <laughs> she already, you know, you want to know why it won't get returned? Because she comes in and is putting it together. She wouldn't let me help her. She's like, I'm an independent woman. I'm going to put the ice maker together. I said, okay. She couldn't figure it out. I was like, here, watch this instructional video. So she still did it herself, but she had a little help. Uh, anyway, she immediately got the work, the um, instructions soaked in water. <laughs> like just ruined the instructions book. I'm like, well, can't take this back. Yeah, we can. Okay. For a second though, real quick. Can we go back to the Taylor thing? I thought you were about to say the Spider-Man thing. <laughs> I was about to punch you. Go ahead. I could. I could go on for days. But anyway, because um, I did I did pull some TikToks about some interesting fan theories. Um, oh, about the T-Swifties? Yeah, about the T-Swifties. So this first one. Wait, specific- wait. Okay. before Right before we get into this, um, I saw a, a TikTok about people who can't who started their Snapchat names when they couldn't get <laughs> oh, uh, like 13 so years funny. old and like somebody's like you think your Snapchat name is bad mine is um Taylor Swiftler it was like Tadoff Swiftler yeah. Tadoff Swiftler <laughs> anyway it feeds into this Taylor Swift thing okay so this one is talking about the the all, all I know what was it called the something 10 all minute version well. all too well okay look here are the actors just very clearly being directed to just goof off, be affectionate with each other. We're just going to keep the cameras rolling. And then there's a super deliberate shot, okay? That's so clearly like set up. This is exhibit A, I guess. Exhibit B is that this is the most (laughs) iconic on-screen kiss of all time uh, between Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst, who was dating Jake Gyllenhaal at the time this movie was released and was still dating Jake Gyllenhaal when the sequel came out in which her character tries to recreate the upside down kiss with a different love interest, trying to see if she can like recapture the magic of that first relationship now she's trying to move on from it and she just kind of can't she steps back from this and she's pretty disappointed but his character who you know wasn't there for the first kiss is like really blown away by it this is the relationship that jake gyllenhaal was in when it would have actually been age appropriate for him to have been dating a 21 year old uh kirsten Dunst was actually 21 when they started dating and he was 22 and again like these two had a house together they bought a dog anyway back to taylor swift directing actors playing a version of herself Dude, and a Taylor's version of jake chill. gyllenhaal to recreate That's what I'm the kiss. Saying. there is one major difference between the way this kiss is staged and the way the upside down kisses in spider-man are staged and that is that in spider-man the female character initiates both of those kisses and here the male character initiates it. In the short film, this shot plays over the line back before you lost the one real thing you'd ever know. To Taylor as the writer and I think the character, it's very clear that this is the one real thing either of them had ever known. But to Taylor, the director, putting the shot over this line, looking back on those lyrics now, I think this might be one of her ways of acknowledging that this was never as real to him. And in fact, he might've even been trying to recreate the type of relationship he'd had when he was her age. Well, first off, I hate that you brought this back to Spider-Man. <laughs> I love that he figured out a way. I saw that TikTok and I literally was like, oh my gosh. And there have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more just absolutely picking apart these music videos. And you can't say that people are reaching because that makes so much sense. No, it's very smart. Like I applaud her for her create, um, being cre- so creative. And if... And if that's true, like if that's all planned, like like that's so in depth and beautiful that she was able to make her mind do that. But also, Honestly, chill. But okay, chill. I'm there with you with the chill. But if she was able to just like like just the inception level layers that go into it. No, it's it really like, well done. I'm so like impressed by it. But also, cinematic dude, master. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that in- those layers of each individual shot go further and further and further and further. Every single shot in that music video has layers to it, it's just so like that shot. I do I do wonder though, is, is 
as interpreters, like there's a million, two million people being able to interpret this. Are they able to find something in it no matter what? Are they like, oh, you could definitely interpret this? Or it, I wonder if sometimes she's like, I didn't even mean for that to happen. But but I feel that, but like that's, that's a thing. lot of it though. It, it, I think it's 50 50, honestly, because so, like, that okay, is that so seems, intentional. That seems really intentional. There but are there's, some of there's them. There's some of them where I'm like, you're definitely reaching yeah. here. But there's some of them where I'm like, oh my God. Because, like, the, the upside down kiss thing, that, it, like she said, that is like one of the most iconic kisses in film history. Is she dating you know? anyone right now? Taylor Swift? Yeah. No. No, I don't think so. Do you think, do you think people are honestly like, yo? <laughs> she probably kind of like, blackballed herself from the dating world. Yeah, I mean, I would be terrified. I'd be like, I don't want to date like Ed Sheeran for a second too. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, he he's opened been, up for her on tour. Yeah. I think he's also been married for a little bit. So he's been with the same girl for a long time. Um, but so, okay, Zach, justice, going, I assume. Yes. Still going on the, uh, the Taylor Swift train. You know, you've been kind of obsessed with the, the song that's like, please don't be in love with someone. Please uh, uh. don't be right? in love with someone. I, did, have you guys seen who that song is about? No, I didn't. Or the theory behind who that song no, is I about? I, I did not go past listen to that maybe tune. Maybe I have. Ear. I shit you not. I don't shoot. know. I shoot you not. I I don't know if I can play this because it'd probably get copyrighted. Just but it. it is. It's about the Owl City guy. What? Yeah. Oh she's, yes, I have heard about okay, this. She's so, going for everybody. Um, because no, the, no, no, the no, no. Like, are, please don't be in love with someone else. Please don't have somebody waiting on you. Waiting on you. So right. So then these people, <laughs> right? She they, dated the Owl City guy. Yeah. yeah. So Who then, hasn't she dated? So then they pull up um, Owl City, and he has a song where his lyrics are: "I was never in love with someone else. I never had somebody waiting on me because you were all of my dreams come true. I just wish you knew, Taylor. I was in love with you." So his song came out second. Yeah. Yeah. His so he just made that song as a rebuttal. was like a direct response. And the, everyone in the comments, they were like, I love the balls on this. Yeah. Man. He's just like at her. Yeah. He, That's great. Good for, oh, speaking of being added. Wait, do we, oh, sorry. Just wait. before we get off, it's like, are we, I don't, I don't think I like the automatic demonization of like, okay, it's automatically the guy's fault since she made a song about Here's it. Here's the thing. Yeah. I've never blamed, like, I don't blame Jake Gyllenhaal Not at saying all. that Taylor's not in the right 100%. I just don't know both sides. Like, why exactly. why, why are we crapping on all these people if we don't know both sides? Mm -hmm. It's like the, sorry. Oh, wait, no, say what you're going to say because I have one more video. It's like new young Taylor. Okay, there's even Olivia Rodrigo references in her new album, by the way. It's like, there's one thing that's just like, I wish I was 17 because uh, I love the map, like yada, yada, yada. I like the TikTok. I'm going to find it and I'll let you play it now so you can see what I'm talking about. Olivia Rodrigo is very much like new young Taylor Swift. Her whole album was about her quote unquote ex, Joshua Bassett. Joshua Bassett is now releasing a response oh, yeah. album to hers, which is a direct response to, I think, driver's license to um, Trader, like all these things, like a direct response. Is he also doing it? To, like towards what was the other girl's name? The don't Sabrina. They, don't Sabrina. they still work on a show together? <laughs> yes. Well, oh. no. Okay. Oh. I know that normally Disney contracts last at least like three to four seasons. They just finished filming season three, mm. or season three's out or something. So I mean, I could don't be over. Could be not. I don't know if it would. The most I think it would ever go to is like a season four before like her team tries to re like before they get into like renegotiations of contracts and her team will be like, give us $3 billion and Disney's going to have to be like, we can afford that. But if I was yeah. creative enough and I broke up with someone, like we broke up, we were still on mutual terms. We were both singers. I'd be like, yo, let's blow up off this. Yo, it's kind of genius. Like, I feel like there's gotta be some of but that. But she was like, I, I know from like, she's never publicly admitted that it was about him. She's publicly admitted. And she is publicly spoken on Sabrina Carpenter's re like, direct response to her stuff because Sabrina wrote a song and released it like a week after driver's license and was like a complete direct response to her. She's responded to that being like, I've never really met her. I, and I thought they were on the show. They didn't have like any Sabrina scene. Carpenter and Olivia Rodrigo. No. Oh, I thought well, LaMelo was... ball almost had triple double last night. So <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, she she's responded to that, but she's never responded. In your as eyes. far as I'm concerned, she's never officially responded about it being about Joshua Bassett. So wait, where was I going with this? Zach, Damn it, my I'm ADD. Zach, I'm gonna start getting more into basketball so we can have these conversations. It would be nice to I'm have a do little that bit for of you. sports conversation. Hey, you can talk to me about Kentucky basketball. Well, no, and it's and it's not that I don't love the drama in the T-Sis, um, but it's just that I don't love the drama. Hey, in the I watch sport. <laughs> sports, sports um, with you. 
I watch Kentucky basketball with you and football. I watch almost every game. Can you name four players on the Kentucky basketball team? Oscar Shibwe, um, something Wheeler. I, I was able to name five the other day. Something Wheeler. You tell me I can name all three Jonas Brothers and you can't even. They're slipping my mind right now, but I was able to do it the other week. It's okay. Speaking of passionate people, we went to a One Direction fangirl night last night. Oh my And fanboy. And fanboy. Fans um, there. fantasy. It was fangirl fantasy. Our friend Julie Russell puts it on. If you are ever in the area of where she's putting it on, I could not recommend more that she that you guys go. She does ones for like One Direction, Five Sauce, Taylor Yeah, Swift. so it's it's a themed party. It's like a themed club. You come in and they only play like, like eighteen over. Yeah, they only play uh, like a little bit of Taylor Swift night, One Direction night, just all that type of music. So everybody knows the words. It's a lot of fun. It's so much fun, and I was screaming at the top of my lungs with. People I've never, did, never knew existed. That's how little we knew about each other. And we were just screaming One Direction songs in each other's faces. And it was the best time of my life. It was, it was all the parts of a club and a really good party meshed into one. I saw Duke versus Kentucky in Madison Square Garden. I feel like we had similar experiences. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, talk about your experience in that New York bar. Oh, it's yeah. Hilarious. So I, I went to visit my brother in New York and... um. I was out in the city and I was coming back to go to his apartment and he's like, no, meet me and Shad, which is our friend uh, at this bar. And uh, cause they were about to leave the bar, but for some reason he told me, no, we're staying. And I was like, that's a little weird because you guys, are just, I was like, something's up. So I come in and uh, right when I walk in, they both shift a chair over <laughs> and there's um, like this middle-aged lady kind of next to them off her rocker drunk. And they they move over and they're like, here's your seat right here. I was like, here we go. <laughs> and I sit down and immediately the, the lady is just plastered. She locks eyes on me. She goes, hey. <laughs> and I said, hi. She goes, you've got the best facial structure I have ever seen. I'd agree with her. And she's mm -hmm. like, you just got cheekbones and everything. And she's like, we would have beautiful children. You and me, we'd have great kids. But I don't want to have kids if... If anyone ever has kids, they're selfish. Call your mom right now and ask her. And she, you could say, mom, why did you have kids? She's going to start the sentence with, I wanted to blah, blah, blah. That's how you know she's selfish. And then she started going she on this. She goes on a tirade. And I was like, oh, that's great. She's like, but we would have beautiful kids. She's like, you're beautiful. I was like, as long as my personality is as good as, uh, <laughs> as, as how you think I look, then I, I'm doing pretty well. She's like, no, you have the worst personality ever. You're not, you do not have a good personality. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, why is that? She's like, you keep looking at your brother for a reassurance. That means you're not confident in yourself I said no I'm looking for him for help and I'm mad at him for putting me in this situation <laughs> she's like okay well she, I was like I gotta go to the bathroom she's like there's a bathroom down there and if it's locked I'll take you to the secret bathroom and she's like you put, and, <laughs> where is the secret bathroom and then, Narnia and she's like she's like you need to be hugged more and I said <laughs> I agree with that as well Zach <laughs> hates physical affection he hates it yeah, so she's like, you need to be hugged more. I said, I don't. She's like, I'm gonna hug you. And then she's like <laughs> hugging me and then she just starts kissing me. Oh, should we roll a clip, yeah, as, roll uh, a clip. as you like to say? Here's a video of your brother being kissed though, right here. Yeah, so after she was kissing me, like they're all making fun of me because they like leached her onto me. And I was like, no, I said, you can't leave them out. And then they're like, you mother effer. Because <laughs> then he, they just come and just attack, attack them. Um, so she starts kissing us and hugging us and we're like, thank you so much. And then at one point she like gestures her hand out for me to put my penis in it. I said, we're not doing that. What? Yeah. <laughs> she went like this and she's like, is this a penis in it? And I was like, put um, it in there. And But anyway, she wanted to take me to the secret bathroom. And so she tells me I need to be hugged more. And then um, she's the wife of a very famous um, guitarist. I'll just say that. And we didn't believe her until she pulled up her Instagram. It was very true. But she's like, yeah, I used to be just a side piece whore who used to suck people off to get into uh, oh. concerts. But now I'm the real thing. Got the diamond on the hand and now we're married. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, you probably shouldn't be here, you know, kissing. Yeah, where's her husband? Like, what is But that? I feel like her kissing was, it was almost like a motherly kiss. It wasn't like a, I want to be with you. But the, 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 the I was on FaceTime. The gesture of the penis thing was a little strange for me because she did like- and and the secret bathroom. The secret bathroom thing. But maybe she's just making sure everything's good down there. Um, she's but, just giving you a quick checkup. Yeah. But she came in with her realtor. Like her, it was like a <laughs> girl's night out. Person. Both blitzed. And the realtor is making out with this some guy just like balding, 50s, probably in his 50s, like just a normal dude in a flannel 
just on his computer. And then she just starts like making out with him. And I don't think he knew what was going on. And I was like, oh, they must be married. And then the realtor leaves. And we learned that from like the guy that they, she didn't know him. Oh, and so he just, yeah, he's just got a, he's just like, I just came here to work and she started, <laughs> I don't came here to work, watch the game. And, um, so we're going back and forth had a good time. And then, and then she's like, where are you from? I said, Oh, I'm originally from Vegas. She said, anyone from Vegas should kill themselves immediately and blow their brains out. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, well, that's aggressive. She's like, if you're from Vegas, you should kill yourself. It's the worst. And I was like, okay, well that hurt my feelings. Um, <laughs> and then she challenged me to an arm wrestle. I fake like I lose to her and she did not like that. So she pulled up her Instagram and showed me how strong she is because apparently she climbs ropes and things. I don't know. And at the end, at the end of all of her kisses and stuff, she looks me in the eyes and she goes, do you buy stocks? <laughs> and I say uh, a little bit here and there. She's like, buy water. I was like, what, like bottled or like a, the stock water. She's like, like bottled water, buy bottled water. I said, why? She goes, you'll know what it means in six months. Just so and then just stares me in the eyes. And I said, I'm like trying to joke. I was like, you want to go with me to get water? She's like, I'm not joking. Buy <laughs> water. I said, okay. And then um, at the end, she she wrote a little note for me um, that said, what did she say, Jared? And she and, wrote this on a, like and a the, drink koozie thing. Because I guess I wasn't giving her enough attention, but you are a gay guy. <laughs> so she assumed because I didn't want to get physical hey, with her or whatever it was. You I would have had beautiful children. But, but you are a, a gay, gay guy. guy. But you are a gay guy is yeah. what um, she wrote for so, me. So that was she's a nice lady. Yeah, she's a nice lady. I just thought it was funny. Wholesome. <laughs> I wish we could say her name because her name is so interesting. It is very um, interesting. What is it? It's uh, but you had to come home early from New York because, because big boy got uh, an STD Zach. from the girl. <laughs> he booked um, his mom role on an Apple TV show. I did what? You booked his mom role on an Apple TV show. I booked a small role on an Apple TV show. I was Joel, the pizza guy. That's, yeah, so, that's cool. so cool. I am famous now and I don't have to do this podcast anymore and I'm better than all of you. <laughs> Correct. Um, so, so yeah. How did you feel? Like super famous, like almost Jake Gyllenhaal. I'll you probably your, date Taylor Swift after this. You had your own trailer and everything. Yeah, I, I had know. my own trailer. It's not a big like you can cut to a clip. I had my own sync. That's so cool though. I like, would, dude, it, I'm famous. I told Jared and he instantly started crying. I legitimately started crying when I like heard that you got. The I role. have the video. Oh, that makes yes. me feel warm inside. Why is it because you felt happy for me? Yeah, because I'm Jared. I'm so proud of you. For what? For doing the damn thing. I darn think it, things. Okay, Sorry. so. Again, a very small role. I basically just make fun of the people in the thing for whatever. And I deliver them pizza in the meantime. But in my audition clip, I put, uh, hey, guys, I bought pizza last night. So I'm pretty well versed in delivering pizzas. And maybe they're just like, yeah, this guy gets it. Yeah, so. I, I think that like because you added some uh, some uniqueness to your. And to I'm your probably going to be the best pizza guy ever on TV ever. But I think the exciting thing was when you came home from set and you were talking about like your experience, you're like, oh, well, we were doing like coverage and stuff like that. But on the, like the last take of all of them, they let me just like add, not ad lib it, but like do my own version. They, of they, it. they let me do a version I was more comfortable with. Um, they were like, maybe try like a nervous version. I was like, that's what kind of what I wanted to do. And I did it super nervous and um, that they all loved it. And it, like one person from each department came up to me and was like, wow, you did a really good job acting in that. And like even the little kid came up and told me I did a good job. But anyway, this isn't about me. This is about Spider-Man. <laughs> no, but I think that's awesome. And Jared, like, I don't like talking about things that I accomplished that are good. I know I, I took a video of you crying. But I can't find it right now, but yeah, we'll Jared was definitely crying when I... I was crying because that's, that's my boy. And he's How do we know it. he's not manipulating me and he's fake Found crying? It. I'm not fake crying. I'm real crying. Are you going to cry right now? I'm on the verge. We'll cry. You're always on the verge of crying. But because I'm proud of you. I think you're always Are you going to buy me something? yourself to cry. Why would I buy you something? As a congratulations? I made you dinner. Is that true? <laughs> it's an innuendo. <laughs> um, no, but I was proud of you. And I, I like, especially with the story when you were like, did it your own way and like everybody came up to you and like they made sure that you did it that way, like each take. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, I feel like that might mean that they might use like your version of it. That's really cool. I think you don't make a you, big deal about you things. You like to downplay that stuff, but that's why we're But we here. were all very, very up. excited. Like I was screaming on the phone, very excited. Jared, you were crying. So by this time next year, I'm probably going to be the most famous actor in the whole world or something. Correct. Yeah. 
That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, Jared, it would be pretty cool. <laughs> and you probably won't hear from me because I'd be so rich and famous and dating Taylor Swift. And then she's going to write a song about me. I want to bring back, okay, we st- when we when we were doing this podcast for the longest time, we did fan questions. And um, uh, we for some reason, we just like got away from it. And I, I think wanna- we got away from it because everyone just kept asking us the same questions. That is true. That is true. We got a lot of the same like relationship kind of questions and, and the stuff most, like that. We like video questions, but we also like super interesting ones. Like, like call out Jared, like Jared, why does your face look like that? Or anything like something like really interesting we can talk See, about. He just took that personal. I didn't take that Yes, personal. you did. You went like this. Or Indy, like why... She will take it personal. No, I won't. I legitimately did not take that personal. Why, why would I take it personal? Well, you're taking it personal right now. <laughs> I'm taking it personal that you think I would take it personal. Mm. What? Mm. What was your joke? <laughs> Just say it. I can be jokey. <laughs> can you? Yes, say it. I swear I'll laugh. Well. It's just it's funny. Told you you didn't want me to say it. I'm laughing yep. at it. Okay, so but I want <laughs> to get... Uh, back to some fan questions. So um, I pulled a few video ones, and I'm excited to uh, bring them. What the fuck was that, well, I Richard? Feel like, <laughs> I feel like if we were bringing back old things, I want to. Dude, I am accurate from yeah. a distance. I don't know. I feel like if we were bringing back old things, I oh, wanted to just nailed your chuck it. You know what I mean? Oh, wait. Hold on. Can I play one TikTok real quick? Yeah. Okay. Have you seen the, the video of the guy that um, is doing the list of things you can say to piss men off. No. Oh, my God. It is pretty funny. Speaking of which, have you seen the Island Boys? Yeah, I hate Island Boys. <laughs> it's the um, worst. This guy is hilarious. I haven't I seen these. Series. You haven't? Really? No. My name is Kyle Pru, and welcome back to Things You Can Say to Piss Off Men. Let's not delay. Number one, we have, hi, I'm Kyle Pru, and welcome back to Things You Can Say to Piss Off Men. <laughs> Yeah, this one works incredibly well in my experience. It works well enough for people to DM and threaten your mother. Quick backstory on my mother. She sewed her whole face back together after a motorcycle crash in France because she didn't trust a student nurse to do it. So I'm pretty sure she can handle a 5-5 Reddit moderator. (laughs) Number two, we have call their favorite director basic. Now, do this even if it's not Quentin Tarantino or Paul Thomas Anderson. If they say Wong Kar Wai, say, oh my God, if I had a dollar for every Wong Kar Wai (laughs) statement. Number three, in Joker 2, the Joker should be a woman. <laughs> I like when they ask why you said this, say, well, women are more persecuted in society, so I feel like she'd have like actual reasons to be upset. What? Saying this one out loud, I think maybe you shouldn't do it because a certain kind of man will kill you for it. <laughs> Number four, we have, oh, so it's like Cole's cash. Say this when a man tries to explain crypto. <laughs> and finally, number five, we have no. Um, this one is an all-timer, just <laughs> such a banger. Been putting numbers on the board since the formation of Indo-European language. Oh, uh, yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> but, so it's like Cole's cash. So now, now fan questions. Let's do it. Hi, my name is Sarah. Yeah, right. I'm actually from Denmark. Where? Denmark. Denmark. Oh. <laughs> my question is, what, what's your dream job? In like kindergarten, preschool versus what? What's your dream job in high school? Oh, that's cool. I thought that was interesting. What's your dream job in uh, elementary school? I mean, uh, in kindergarten, Jared. Go. It was legitimately, and you guys are gonna make so much fun of me, but I had the I had this because one of my mom's friends did this, and I thought it was a really cool job. It was like garbage. <gasps> I don't man. even want to say it. Um, they they bred race horses. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, thank God. That's kind of cool. I, so I wanted to be a racehorse breeder for a long time. Yeah, I'll probably be a racehorse breeder. <laughs> <laughs> but like, actually, because like I grew up going to like the 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 tracks like with my parents and stuff, and I was like, I I was thought that was a like badass one. job. I look like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to think anything oh. to trigger him. Anyway, what uh, was what you want to be in high school? Um, what I wanted to be in high school, I, I wanted, wanted to, to be, breed with the horses. <laughs> it was still animal related. I oh. wanted to be a vet. Like I, I, I gave up. I, at some point, I was like, "This is a lot about your personality, actually." Yeah. Why? It makes be- sense. Because um, vets have been almost monopolized by women. Well, it's actually a, it's actually a little bit of a toxic study because once more women started becoming veterinarians, uh, it's like some percentage for every like ten percent new women that become veterinarians like one percent of males won't be it anymore because there's so much because now they see it as a female occupation and you 
on your lighter side raised by two women, it's kind of like interesting to see that in your psyche. Oh, I'm not saying that's right. I was just saying that's, no, but that's a that's yeah. an interesting like theory. Um, yeah, I, I just always wanted to work with animals. Um, that, that's, that's always been. I guess you are the first. Can, if you want to work with animals, you can work with this hog. <laughs> yeah, that's inappropriate. Okay, then I won't make the joke again. Thanks for actually checking me and making sure that I'm a more astute human. That actually means a lot to me for being a good friend. So why don't you continue? In my early, I can't like remember what I wanted to be like in kindergarten. I just remember at, in my early, 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 early stages of childhood, I knew I always wanted to be a, a, a surgeon or a doctor and somebody that specialized in cancer treatment just because of my grandpa. Oh, um, I and I literally like wrote this like whole poem on it too about like hoping like one day I was able to find his cure and whatever. Yeah, I always wanted to be something in the medical field because I thought that at that point there was no treatment options for him and there was no way for him to, like there was no there was no treatment options for him. So I was like, if everybody else is too fucking dumb to do this, I'll figure it out myself. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. And then when I got later into school, this is before obviously I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. When later in the school, I wanted to be, um, I wanted to work in, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to be a criminal lawyer or if I wanted to be in like forensic science or. So what now? Um, leaning towards OnlyFans. Gotcha. Um, because of the Amazon purchase? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I always wanted to do something in the criminal field just because. Your mom was also a lawyer. Uh, my mom was a lawyer, so I kind of grew up hearing a lot about it. Zach, what about you? I actually wrote it out and I still have the piece of paper. I wanted to be um, a hunk on a motorcycle in a band. Oh, I, I've seen that paper. <laughs> I literally, hilarious. like, I, as a child, I wrote a hunk. <laughs> so I don't think that word's making a comeback yet. Um, and then high school, kind of wanted to end it all. Or no, I wanted to. You say all the time that you would easily go back to high school right now because you had the best yeah, time. Yeah, high school was the best time. What did I want to be? For a while, I wanted to be a car designer. What? Interesting. Like I wanted to like design cars. I think I sketched one and then I was over it. But um, <laughs> and it, and it was just like, it was just like the two D version too, with like the wheels and then the yeah. You didn't even like get into the three D modeling. I did want to be a car designer for a while. That's probably more middle school. You're right. Uh, well, then you went into you kind of kept that design thing and you started designing like merch and stuff. Well, I I created like a small clothing thing that was like really terrible designs um called zinc originals and uh but i i definitely wanted to be an entrepreneur of some sort i thought of this i I talked about it before but i thought of the i still own the domain um this website called university funder where basically while you're growing up it's like a crowdfunding website so every birthday and christmas you can send a link to your family members or friends and then they can put they can drop a little bit of money into your college fund like every year so then slowly it'll be in a bank account and maybe get some like interest or like it'll it'll they'll go ahead and um put in like a compound interest account and then people so every year instead of like giving you money that might go to waste they'll put it in your account so when you graduate high school and you start it when you're one then you'll make a lot of money and then we would get like a five percent kit back on whatever money was donated yeah no i think i i remember you telling me that idea and i to this day i still think you should find a way to i still got the domain university funder.com i think you should 100 do that that's how am i supposed to do that i'm over here making tiktoks you hire developers and stuff like that oh my gosh speaking of developers that amazon thing makes you sure look developed huh just kidding (laughs) all right uh what's the next one quick question so i am in college right now yeah right um i'm currently majoring in theater education because I wanted to do theater and I thought this may be just a better life choice for me or whatever. Um, so I chose that. But at the moment, I'm thinking about switching it, even though um, theater is pretty much what I wanted to do for all my life. And so it's kind of a weird idea to not be like studying that hardcore. Um, but also, I have a theater scholarship since I'm a theater major, and I know that it's probably helping a lot I don't want to lose that. So basically, my question is, do you think it's worth doing it, keeping it, or should I change it if I'm not feeling as, like, up and at him as I used to about it? Also, got to be Team Zach. Thank you, my baby man. boy. Kiss me if you see me in public, right? A theater major. 
I mean, we're going to be up front with the guy, not going to make any money yeah, coming out of tough, college. That is a tough but it is. Major. It depends. It depends. But I, also... Hey, so coming from somebody that did musical theater for years of her life and, and meeting a lot of the professionals that still do it, unless you were on Broadway performing every night in one of the most popular shows... You're gonna make fucking. Zip. Well, I thought I thought it was like theater management. I didn't think it was like it's actual. The, well, if it's theater management, I think because I, I think it's theater management. You know enough. Like I feel like you could find that out where you could get a degree that is you could get a job easier with, and then the theater stuff you could still absolutely do. So your day job fuels your passion until your passion becomes your day job. So. I think it's easier to make money in like a different major initially. And then with that major, get creative, like start your own theater cl club, like do like some type of internet show, something really inventive that no one's ever seen in theater before. I don't know exactly what that is. Cause I don't know. No I know nothing about theater, but, um, but also you have to think if he switches majors, he loses that scholarship and then he's going but in the long run. Debt. Will he make more money? It really depends on what he wants to do with it. And like, I don't know the situation behind like his situation or, but I had a friend in college that was like kind of like theater management, so, something like that. And um, he, I don't know how he got this opportunity, but he got hired by Universal Studios, uh, like their theme park in Orlando, Florida. And now he's managing like the park or like not the entire park, but like sections of the park, like all the characters and set design and stuff like that. Like he manages all of that. So like that could be, and I know he makes good money doing that. So it kind of depends on just personal. Well, I also, I know nothing about theater, but when it comes to the arts, a degree, a lot of times doesn't matter as much. Yeah. I've never like been when, asked where I went to school and I worked in film for a while. Yeah. When that's just people my, like, uh, like I've definitely like met people that think they're better than me because they're quote unquote more qualified. And they're like, I went to USC for acting and I'm like, like I give a fuck. You've got just as I've got just as good of a chance as getting this role as you do. So that that's my that would be my only thing is I for just my mild experience in entertainment, the resume doesn't matter as much as the or the the learning resume. Yeah. Doesn't. Doesn't, as far as building your own resume and then a proof of concept is way way more um smiled upon out here. Okay. And then last question. It's a relationship question. Um, so it says... It's hey, first dropouts. Of, first of all, love the podcast. Y'all are killing it. Anyways, I have a relationship question. What do y'all think is too much when it comes to an age gap between a couple? Because I kind of have a situation where this guy and I really only like each other, but it's been seven years older than me. Oh, wait, but he's seven years older than me. So what do y'all think? I'll Also, I'm 34% indie because... Uh, she makes me love myself, and I've always loved her. Uh, whatever. And he, uh, thirty three percent Zach because he cracks me up. See, I'm just filling my role. And thirty and zero percent whole milk because uh, Jared, you're by far just one of the, the most, most adorable, adorable people. people ever. So yeah, keep it up. Well, I think it depends on the age gap, right? Like if she's that's, eleven and he's eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's where that's that's where it's like an issue. But I think if you're you know in your late twenties and. That's the thing is like if it's like Riley's parents are seven my parents years. are seven years apart. Obviously, we're at consenting adults at this point. Yeah, but I also think there's so are we saying starting at eighteen consent so, like consenting adults are consenting okay. adults. So you're free like there should be no judgment once it's consenting adults. But there's also you have to learn that brains are developing at different paces, and you should have to make sure you're at the maturity level. Yeah. of each other's points because if you're not and you're also different walks of life you're both learning different things at different times and it can be frustrating for the younger person because it's like oh these things are so new to me why don't you care as much where the older person's like why don't you already know these things like there can be a lot of back and forth and a ping pong of frustration when it comes to the age gap but there can also be beautiful things because there is that contrast like with the older person who might you they might be able to help and be like oh life's still beautiful in these ways because I love the way you're seeing it in such a young view and it's mm -hmm. like oh you have this such maturity you can help also guide me and certain things and vice versa it doesn't mean that the top person or the older person is always knows more than the younger person but maybe the the younger person can help the older person in the same like in, they can, in the perspective and be like you should look at it this way and here's a new perspective because i'm seeing this from an outsider who's never experienced or seen this before and you you have experienced this over and over again so here's a new way of and also things. the younger person can also have a higher maturity I'll, i think you need to link up the maturities 
Mm-hmm. I don't think it's about age. I think it's about maturity, 100%. Um, if you are at consenting age in your state or country, then I don't think people should judge you. But I also think that there should be some definite discussions between your partner bringing up, okay, do you think we're ready for a relationship considering this, this, and this? And you also have to remember, say you're 18 and the guy's seven years older than you. Is he going to be ready to settle down, have kids, get married because he's entering his, you know. Yeah, you got to think, do your ideologies about what you want Yeah, because like he's entering his late 20s, early 30s. That's normally around the age people get engaged and move in together and have kids. And you're entering your, you know, you're just about to enter your early 20s. Is that something that is even crossing we your don't mind? Know what, but we don't know what the age gap is. I'm just saying that. I'm just expressing that. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Like, the, Well, the good for you, because, Jared. Okay. This guy, he's trying to rub his words in my well, face. My again. grandparents he, also have a seven-year age gap. We also got the memes back. Oh, here oh, we yeah, go. Oh, yeah, I love memes. Okay. I say that's so unenthusiastic. Yeah, you yeah, got to work memes. on how you <laughs> say things. I thought this was fucking hilarious. Freaking. Freaking. freaking I, I corrected as soon as I said it. <sighs> freaking hilarious. Um, we're flipping <laughs> the, there are two <laughs> buttons one of them says whole milk and the other one says tequila and then there's me in the third panel the reality Sweating. is jared would just mix them together Ugh. just have a good night i saw a tiktok that said if you mix kalua and orange juice it tastes like a tootsie roll like Ew. equal parts let me see that tootsie roll and um speaking of you wouldn't choose tequila. you've had you got drunk off of tequila too often for you to drink it now Dude, Jared, have you ever been in accurate. in middle school and then the and then the hot thicky in the corner like looks at you and then throws it back on you during Tootsie Roll coming on? The hot thicky Tootsie Roll. Let me, oh, dude, showing your age, huh? Let me see that Tootsie Roll. Yeah, I know, you know that song. Right? I, yeah, I know the song. Dude, well, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna absolutely twerk your booty off to, to <laughs> Tootsie Roll when this thing is over. I don't think I don't think the hot uh, thicky was ever looking my direction. I don't think anyone was looking. Is it because you were a sad you were the, No, Jared. Because I was the hot It's because you were the hot thicky. <laughs> you were supposed to be looking in their direction. Shit. Damn shoot. I, shoot. I missed out on some great opportunities in high school. Okay. My bedroom's now, only a walk away. Go ahead. <laughs> this last meme, I, and it kind of goes well with uh, how we started this podcast. Somebody just sent this post, and they said, show this to Zach. That's all they That's said. That's me. Let me squeeze those milkers. <laughs> Should I go get him? No, I don't want to do that right now. Are you sure? Yeah. You don't want to squeeze those milkers? I do make a lot of... Um, <laughs> Mommy milker jokes? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could be farther from that per Like, I'm a very... In, in real life, I feel like I'm a very cordial... In mature. real life, Zach is super cordial, like... He hates PDA of any kind. Like, and then meanwhile, I'm on the podcast, like fill up my cereal bowl with those milkers, mommy. And I feel like I'm giving an inauthentic view of who I am as a human being. And I'm a fraud. I'm a liar. And I'm a loser. I think it's just that your mind works. And, and thank you guys okay. so much for listening to the podcast. Jared's here. Indy's here. Okay. That's if my you, job. Wait, it no, is. I'm trying to, I always say for them to DM okay. me something. Okay, okay, okay. If you stay till the end, please DM me a picture of Jared photoshopped as spider-man oh that would be sick but it has to be super super well done or super super not well done we can't have in the middle please be super super well done thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of dropouts i'm indiana that's zach justice this is jared bear make sure to do you have a music yeah why did i say that i'm sorry heck this is your music we'll see you guys next week for another episode of dropouts I really love when people hug me, and I like it too. Bye, guys.